We're currently here at the Equifeeds Depot at Reinkiesfontein Training Establishment, North Rand. And this is the best I could do with regard to the colours that were carried to victory on so many occasions by the mighty pocket power. And one never ever compares horses to pocket power or wolf power or horse chestnut or London news because they are all completely unique in their own respect. And pocket power, certainly in my life as a racehorse presenter, has had the most longevity of all of them, having won four Laurent's Queen's Plates, three J&B Mets, of course, having won the Vodacom Durban July dead heating with Dancer's Daughter and also having won the Rising Sun Gold Challenge. He ended up winning nine grade one races. And sadly, on the 31st of July, Marsh Shirtliff received the news from David Hepburn Brown that Pocket Power had breathed his last breath. And it is due to the kindness and the hospitality of Equifeeds that we are able to bring you this program. Equifeeds fed Pocket Power from day one that he walked into the bass's yard until the day he died. Many people didn't realize that Equifeeds carried on feeding Pocket Power long after he left racing. He was eating Equifeeds when he went to Belinda Hatred when he became a show jumper. Not that that career was particularly successful. But he did have a grand and glorious retirement with his good old mate, Marion Oresco, who had been globetrotting in Dubai and Singapore and various places around the world. And we caught up with Marsh Shirtliff at the national two-year-old sale at Gosforth Park to find out what pocket power actually meant to him. And our sincere thanks once again to Equifeeds. This is the feed that kept pocket power alive throughout his racing career and kept him alive right until the day he died. It's a beautiful, oily, nutritious, fresh, consistent blend of food that kept Pocket Power in the pink of health throughout his life. Marshy, this game brings us so much incredible joy, but this particular month of August, starting on the day prior to the beginning of a horse's life, always the 1st of August, was a terribly, terribly sad day for South Africa, for you, for the late Arthur Weber, for Reno, for Mike, for Carol. There's so many beautiful people, boy, boy, Bernie, we don't want to leave anybody out, but when the news became known to you, it must have been a terrible, terrible blow for you. Yeah, I was uh, at home a Saturday morning, um, I think it was the 31st, and David uh, phoned me and said, I've got bad news. I said, which mare has died? So he said, no, it's worse than that. He said, Pocket had died. Um, I think... Pocket meant a hell of a lot to David, having him on the farm for so long. You know, he got so many visitors, made the farm famous as well. And it was a big blow to David, and he was choked up like I'm a bit now. But um, it was just a very sad morning. You know, I've just read a, a tribute uh, written by Dr. Andreas Jacobs for the passing of Silvano, which obviously took place yesterday on the same day that we lost Vivian Player. When, and you think to yourself in racing, how much more can you take in a time of terrible despair for a country, but to lose these iconic horses like Pocket Power and Silvano and arguably the most famous sportsman that ever drew breath in South Africa, Gary Player, loses his wife, Vivian? It's the way of the world, Andy. We, you know, we, we are but for a short time in, in, in the space of time and um, we all got to go sometime. And I have people walking up to me daily and, and commiserating with me about pocket. I'm saying, hell, he, he was a hell of a horse, but he's still just an animal. But obviously he's not just an animal. He was a lot more to us and obviously to a lot of people. So, yeah, life, life must go on. And um, commiserations to Gary and the family and all who loved her. Uh, I remember well, we used to go to the farm. Always a pleasure going to Gary, so to, to the family and everybody, our commiserations. One of the most famous human beings on the planet, as far as horses are concerned, is a guy by the name of Sir Patrick Hogan, who I'm sure you've met. And there was a book once written about a horse that he had called Martin Power, called Give a Man a Horse. And at the end of the day, there are not too many horses that get books written about them. You know, you have to be a sea biscuit or a secretariat, but you really dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's with the love of Gary Lemke, and you put together a most beautiful book remembering his life. Yeah, um, we did our best. It was a bit rushed. I would have 
like to have done a lot more, and I know Gary would have, but um, we're just happy to have it as a chronicle, you know, and uh, we've got plenty of books for anybody who'd like them. We've printed tens of thousands, I don't know why, but <laughs> we've got a few. Um, the wonderful ride we had with him, he was one hell of a horse, Andrew. I believe he was the most accomplished horse ever in the history of our animals in, in South African racing. I mean, you just have to look at the board here. Um, 15 uh, group winners, uh, nine group ones, three group threes, three group twos. And yeah, that speaks for itself. It's hard to, to win more grade one races than your sire. And we all know that Jetmaster may not have achieved what he could have achieved if he could have breathed properly, but he won eight grade one races. And pocket power, not only nine grade ones, but to win the Lormorans Queen's Plate four times in a row, three Mets and get beaten by his stable companion, full sister and dancer's daughter, the gold challenge, how many Champions Cups he was runner-up in, it's just indescribable. Yes, the day um, Pocket went down to his sister, although he came third and wouldn't have won anyway, had she not have won, I was very really distraught. <laughs> And I was a very bad sport that day because I had partners in River Jetes, his full sister, who had won. And um, it all sort of settled eventually. And it was just sad he didn't get the fourth one too. I mean, that would have been something. When it came to Horse of the Year, uh, he was Horse of the Year three times. And it was never, ever debatable. Uh, in recent years, we've had debatable issues with very close calls between... Let's say, for example, this year with, with Jet Dark winning two grade ones and Rainbow Bridge and uh, Linebacker and War of Athena and Captain's Ransom and Got the Green Light and Malmoose. I can go on and on and on. But he was always a clearly defined standout horse when it came to Horse of the Year. Yeah, um, it was hard to go against him when it came to Equus Horse of the Year and... Um, Certainly, he, he sort of won most of the categories he raced in as well. So uh, it was sometimes embarrassing going there year after year and having other horses like River, Jetes and JPEG at the same time and getting so many awards. We were just so blessed and so fortunate to have all these good horses. Of course, he was the cherry on the cake. And um, it was sort of embarrassing. One day, a well-known personality who whose name I won't mention, came up to me after winning just a normal race at Kenilworth and said, hey, Marsh, don't you want to give someone else a chance? You start to feel bad. But we're so proud of him and um, we're going to miss him. I used to get out to David quite a lot, like I still do. And fortunately, you know, uh, when David broke the news, he said, Marsh, just one thing, he went very quickly. So there were no marks on the ground of kicking or anything like that. And he died next to his good friend, uh, Marinaresco. Um, they were huge pals in, in his latter years. Uh, we put Marinaresco, who, who hated other animals, incidentally, in the paddock with him. And they, from the minute they got together, they were the best, inseparable. They used to mow the lawn together, just go through the paddock, which obviously, as you know, was Pocket's favourite pastime, eating. That was his big game, and I think that's what made him a very good racehorse too. He used to be a good doer, yeah. Now, I remember so clearly the deliberation about when to let Pocket Power retire gracefully. And he was flagging ever so slightly towards the end of his career, but he lived such a grand old retirement. He first of all went to Belinda Hatred and she put him through his paces in that beautiful farm of theirs in Constantia. He wasn't really going to be competitive because I don't think he liked going in the two berth alone um, and you know maybe he just done his thing. Yeah I, you know Andrew you know you can be a sprinter and a long jumper but you may not be able to be a high jumper you know <laughs> you, you can't do, do the whole nine yards so um, uh, and saying that thanks to Belinda for giving it a bash I know how much she loved him and she did most of the work on him um, you know, when he was in racing, so thank you. She was a, a huge factor in his success and uh, to all the hatreds. You know, after a while, Belinda said, Marsh, we're not going to make a jump out of him. I think he was doing a meet or something. And uh, eventually, after a good few years, um, we retired him to David. 
and also to Equifeeds. I know maybe I shouldn't be advertising here. They, no, they fed him with great pride. You know about it, yes. All the years Equifeeds fed him up to his dying day. Um, and thanks to them for that. I had a good chat to one of the Bass's really, really close friends. He's a man with enormous brain capacity. He runs a hugely successful company called Cuda, Vian Smith. We know how close Mark is and was, will always be to Pocket Power, as with Mike and Carol and Candice and that entire clan. But it is just such an honour to have just a little bit of support to say that they were around for Pocket Power. Cuda always there for us and a huge factor in racing. I mean, um, they really put back to the point sometimes I wonder how they make a profit because I know the, the game very well. Um, we underwrote, as an insurance company, we underwrote Cuda for quite a while. So yes, they are a massive factor and um, they, they sponsor many, many uh, um, events for in racing. We, we know a lot about his racing career from the time that Heinz Runger got on his back in the very beginning, which is one of the unsung heroes, because there's a, a lot of backroom boys that never get the kudos. But I'd like to touch on his, on his groom, Boy Boy, that, that beautiful face of his and, and the pride with which he groomed Pocket Power and took him on his adventures around the country. Yeah, well, um, there are a lot of unsung heroes when it comes to Pocket. He, he made, made a few heroes in his time. <laughs> Um, firstly, uh, Normie was his first um, groom, and Normie did pretty well with him, and he wasn't there for too long, and then Boy Boy took over. And Boy Boy's still with the stable, and a uh, nicer, more polite, gentle man you can't find, and must have really rubbed off in pocket. He was uh, a very special man and a huge factor. In, in Pocket's welfare and, and well-being and, and certainly his career. You've had lots of experience of travel. JPEG remains the highest earning horse ever to leave South Africa. That record stands with him after his escapades in Dubai and Singapore, etc., etc. But Pocket Power, due to his nature, that beautiful man behind him, Michael Bass, strongly advised you not to travel with Pocket purely because of the sensitivity of the horse. Yeah, uh, you know, I always respect Mike. He trains the horse. I say, if you go to a doctor, you don't tell the doctor what to do. You know, and, and likewise with Mike, uh, he was fully in Mike's charge and what Mike said went. And um, in retrospect, I believe Mike was 110% correct. He had that suspect tooth um, near four. And um, that gave us sleepless nights, believe me. And um, yes, we would have loved him to race overseas, but I think it was the best thing for South African racing and the best thing for Pocket himself to race here. You know, he, he would have probably broken down. He was a very quirky horse. He didn't like going into any dark places. Or I remember one morning loading, we were loading him in the float. He refused to go in. Full stop, it was dark. But he didn't like coming in the winner's enclosure either. No, he didn't. That's another thing. You couldn't get him into the winner's enclosure. He was full of nonsense. So, you know, he was, he was, a, he was very different. So, he, I don't know. I don't think he would have held up overseas, and I don't think his hoof would have held up overseas. So, all credit to Mike for keeping him here and, and having him because we always we knew it wasn't our horse, it was the people's horse, and that's it. As simple as that. Just a feeling that I hold inside my heart. I'm so glad it came around. All this moment that I found, or did it find me? No, all eyes are open to the panoramic view. Aren't you glad you came around? All this moment has been found, or did it find you?